Okay, well, thank you, Sally. Um, and you are recording this? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I am recording this this morning. And make sure to uh, mute your phones, everyone. Thank you. Dr. Larson, you wish your... The conference is in lecture mode. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Sally. Uh, as Sally said, um, just going to give you some information on the national map and its uh, various products and services that you can use. So the purpose of the national map is to provide consistent base map data on a national level and to have this data available through a, through a suite of products and services. USGS is responsible for maintaining national data sets for ortho imagery, elevation, hydrography, geographic names, and land cover, and we also maintain data sets for boundaries structures, and transportation, which those three uh, layers are primarily used in our U.S. Topo product, along with the other ones that are also, of course, in our Topo product. So the primary topic today, uh, it's going to be a, uh, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to provide you with uh, some information on viewer functionality, and then move to a demonstration of uh, download, the downloading uh, capacities that are available, and also how to use the National Map services in ArcMap or another application such as Google Earth. So just uh, to get us off on the right foot, the, the web, website address for National Map is nationalmap.gov. So when you go to that home page, you can basically find everything related to the National Map nested within this website. So we'll just go ahead and click on this link uh, over here. A little slow. Very slow. Okay, there we go. So that brings us to the um, main page that provides more information about the viewer and download platform. So just to get to the viewer, also, then you just click that link. And so there it is, it's pulled up the National Map Viewer. So uh, just as uh, first bit of information, up here in the upper right, you'll see a link for help. Um, this, this viewer is a bit complex. Uh, it's a product that was derived from other uses within the federal government, so it, it's got uh, a lot of complexity to it and can be a, a little overwhelming at times, but you've always got this help button up here that provides you with um, a quick start guide, which is a great way to get started with this, a uh, user's guide, and I'll talk about service list later. But there's a lot of uh, FAQs that are answered in here. Uh, any kind of question likely that you can imagine, can well, there'll be an answer in that help, within that help menu. So um, just as we're looking at this, you can see the, um, the background that shows up when we get in here is this, uh, you can see these various tabs up here in the upper right, there's Topo. There's also a variety of other background cache apps that are available, including the imagery Topo, strictly imagery, hydrography or NHD, hillshade, or just blank. and that seems a bit odd, but it can come in handy as if you start adding other web services into this uh, into the viewer. So we'll just primarily go with the topo for the most part. Oops, there we go. So um, just some basic tools in the viewer that you would be using as you went in here. Uh, the, the default that comes up is the standard toolbox. This just has, you know, how you pan around with, you know, map navigation. There's an identify tool. You can uh, find coordinates just by clicking on certain areas. Um, reverse geocoding is not like much. Uh, this is an important one, clear graphics. When you start making selections and identifying things, that's a great way to get rid of all the stuff that gets it, can make it a bit cluttered. You can always use this button to uh, zoom back out. And it's, it's actually displaying, displaying a, bit, a bit strangely since we're connected to um, the WebEx for some reason, but it, it should be zoomed out a bit more. Um, uh, panning and uh, zoom box tools, 
download tool, uh, download data tool, which you can see this button is exactly the same as this one that's in the in the upper right, download data. And we'll we'll work with that a bit more later on in the presentation. There's also an advanced uh, toolbar that allows you to do things like measure distances and areas. Uh, you can add data, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a bit also. There's some other added functionality here that I won't really go into, um, just managing your selections and how to select with buffers and that kind of thing. And then there's also a, an annotation toolbar, which actually is it's got some, some advanced functions. Uh, it does allow you to actually you can create shape files from going in here. You can uh, you can create points and and lines uh, and polygons, and you can export those uh, features you create as shape files. We won't be getting into that too much today. Just wanted to introduce you to that capability. So and then over here on the left hand side, you'll see. Um, the base, the, the layers that are uh, shown. Well, these actually, the, these are base layers, but you're, you're not. At, a lot of these things are not actually showing the data. It's just showing the availability of the data. So I'll, I'll show you that in a bit. Also, just want to be aware of these other tabs. Selection. We'll see that a little later. And also the cart when you actually go to download data. We'll be using that. So. Just showing you some of the information that's available within the viewer. Um, so it, this viewer is primarily designed as a window into our free and publicly available data. And so what I'm going to show you now uh, in this overlays component are some of the base data layers, how they're displayed, and you can find out what data is actually available for a particular area. So I'm just going to uh, start with a sample of uh, land cover. I will um, expand those layers and I'll just select the, uh, let's see, so the default that comes up is the 2006 National Land Cover data set. And so by just clicking those boxes it activates that and you can see the legend that appears. Applicable for all of these under the space data layers, you see this little blue uh, you see the little blue triangle. If you click on that triangle, you can see uh, some various options within here. One of those is transparency, which might comes in handy as you start adding a number of layers in there. You can make it more opaque or more transparent. A little more on the opaque side there. One other thing that's uh, important to know when you're adding these layers, you might wonder what is this data? Where is it coming from? So just like, uh, again, again, you would click the little blue triangle, scroll down to Map Service Metadata, and it pulls up the metadata that's associated with that data layer. So if you're not sure what you're looking at, you can just pull that up and see exactly. Oops. See exactly what you're looking at there. Close the land cover, and let's take a look at elevation availability. So this isn't actually going to show us an elevation. It's just showing what is available in the National Map Holdings as far as what is the best available data for a particular area. So I'm just going to, let's see going to zoom into the Austin area since that's where those of us here in the room are located. So just to see this a little more uh, closely, you can just see here on the on the legend it's showing that uh, so these areas in, in this sort of grayish brownish color, the best available data in the NED for that area is the 1 9th arc second. And then the areas that are in the orange are uh, the best available data is uh, the one third arc second or 10 meter DEM. Oops, let's see. Zoom in a little closer on Austin. I'll also demonstrate here the availability of the hydrography, national hydrography data set. So if I just click on that layer, 
I'm going I'm going to turn off that topo up here on the right and I'm going to put it blank just so you can see it a little better. Oh, maybe it might Well, I'll just leave it blank. Well, let's put it in a little shape just to have a little some some context. So, as you can see, it's showing the uh the hux at the uh 10 digit level and then as I zoom in, this hydrography is a scale dispe scale dependent display and so as we zoom in closer, taking a little while here. Right, we'll zoom in a little faster. So, um, so as you can see, as we've zoomed in closer, it's it changes from a huck level 10 to uh, the 12 digit hucks, and it's also displaying some of the other features within the NHD. Um, Got you know some various point data features, the linear uh, streams, lakes, reservoirs, etc. So the hydrography is scale dependent. I'm going to turn that off, and I'm switch back to topo here. All right, so those are some of the base data layers like I'm showing, just some of the, it's just a window into see, seeing what is actually available. We've also, within the viewer, got what we sort of refer to as uh, sort of built-in mashups. So uh, we'll just go to national natural hazards, excuse me, and just see some other data that's included in here. This is a, a good tool to use, particularly if you're not necessarily interested in going into Arc map and doing things, you can just come in here and find a whole lot of information from publicly available uh, databases. So, just as an example, we'll turn, let's see, we'll go and look at uh, the FEMA National Flood Hazards layer. And this is actually a great place to find things. Uh, you can see this list of various pieces of information that FEMA is, is or that, that's being served up in that layer. Uh, let me see here. Let me turn that All right, go ahead and turn that layer on. So you can see the various uh, the panels that are available. I guess the D firms, as they call them, the digital flood insurance rate maps. And then as we zoom in a bit closer, it actually flood hazard boundaries. Um, Flood hazard zones. I was able to see the legend for this yesterday. For some reason, it's not, it's not showing up here. Um, in any case, you can see the various uh, d different levels of the uh, flood hazard zones, and yeah, for some reason the the legend is not appearing. I don't know why, but in any case, that's uh, one usable layer, the built-in mashup, as I mentioned. Uh, I'm going to zoom back out to a national level here. You can see the next layer I'm going to display, and we'll do uh, we'll turn on watches and alerts. And this is showing various uh, types of information, various watches and warnings that are going on at any given time. We'll turn off that so it's not conflicting. So as you can see here, figure out, okay, where is this data coming from, the metadata? So th this is a, a tool within USGS. It's pulling in information from other sources like National Weather Service and that kind of thing, but it's all clustered in here together. So just here under watches and warnings, you can see where various events are going on, where uh, weather warnings are, or fire warnings are, are being shown in various areas. You can also turn on uh, USGS US hazards. I'll turn all these off to start with so we're not overwhelmed. Turn that off. Turn that on. Uh, we can turn on the earthquakes layer. You can see it's symbolized by different magnitudes. You can see those are the various ones. Those are various uh, earthquakes. 
we can zoom in on them, we can actually do an identify on this layer. Uh, using that identify tool, it's located, so I've you know selected an area and it's pulled up all these various earthquakes. You can go here and then you would click on that feature and it's going to let you know, okay, this is an earthquake and the magnitude was uh, 3.1 and it happened at this time. You can see as I selected those features, it, we went from the overlays tab, it automatically pulled up the selection tab, so it's showing you all those features that are that are now being shown. So we'll go back, we'll shut off earthquakes. Uh, we can turn on wildfires. And the wildfires data, I believe that's coming from, uh, not sure if it's GeoMac or exactly where it's coming from, but it's, um, So you can see it's still showing that feature that I selected. We'll click on that clear. So you can just see these little fire symbols that are uh, being shown around the country. Current wildfires, so basically not a whole lot going on in the in the, in the desert LCC region. Just go ahead and identify one of these and see what. Uh, comes up. So that uh, fire, I guess it's named the tree farm fire and uh, it's showing the acreage and uh, that doesn't make much sense. Report time, March 25th. Maybe that's a planned fire. I don't know. In any case, uh, just, just some of the data that's uh, available through these uh, built-in mashups under, other, under the natural hazards. Um, there's also other feature data. These are some other built-in mashups. Uh, so scan topo maps. So those are the uh, uh, th those are the original scan topographic maps that is actually being served up by Esri. Uh, I'm going to clear that out and zoom in a little closer, and we might be able to see the features that see the maps that are. They're shown there, so you can see, and it's also scale dependent. It's showing the most appropriate scale for our for our zoom level. If we mouse over. You can see that information that pops up there. That's built-in metadata that just pops up. We can also um, USGS protected area owner So this is a, a data source that's coming in showing various uh, data holdings of what they would just refer to as protected areas, whether they're owned by tribe or, or National Park Service, Forest Service, that kind of thing. So that's uh, some useful data that's built in also there. So you can see all those built-in mashups. If you're a GIS user, you might actually or have have some data that people in your organization are serving up. You can actually add your own content to this as well. You just have to know the particular address to use. So I'm going to uh, let's see. I'll just zoom out. Sorry, I'll just zoom back out here. Um, so. This is a, a really great tool to be able to pull in layers and, and compare data that you have with, uh, with some other data layers without having to go into using ArcMap. If you're not if you're not a GIS user, this is a great alternate tool for you to use without having to get into that level. So let's see. I to. So 
This is one, uh, I'm just going to use this one as an example. This is the Arizona Geological Survey. They serve up some, uh, some services, some map services. So to add those services, you just click on this button, that little, that little button there. You can see there's the different, uh, different types of data that you can add it in different formats, whether it's an ArcGIS server, KML file, web map service, uh, WMTS. I'm now drawing a blank what that stands for. Do you remember what that, WMTS? I don't remember what that stands for. Web map. Something. Yeah, just sorry. Right, anyway, <laughs> don't don't remember. Anyway, so I copied that um, that address for the Arizona Geological Survey, and I'm just going to paste it in here. And so this is what they call the web map tile service. Web map tile service. Okay. Thank you, Sally. You're welcome. So I just paste that in there, and then I click connect, and then it gives me some options. Okay, so now it's so this it's now reaching into the, the data holdings of the Arizona Geological Survey and saying, okay, this is what we are serving up. What would you like to look at? And I'll just select this one, the geologic map of Arizona. They add data. So it's going out, reaching in, and you can see right there in Arizona, it's now just pulled in that pulled that data in and it's showing it right in the display. I'll zoom in a little closer in here. And the the functionality of these it kind of varies as to what who whoever the provider or whatever they're serving, and some of these are not identifiable depending on who's serving it up and what they're allowing. But I believe the Arizona let's see well, distribution of map units. So you can see here on the left, there's the uh, the legend. So it's showing us um, names of those uh, units, and also. Use the identify tool, and we'll just uh, we'll just select a couple there, and so it's so it's saying okay, here's this one. We can then click on that, and it's going to tell us exactly. Uh, what's oh, it's just showing the line up here. Polygon. So it's telling us what that um, what that map unit is there. Okay, so that's sort of the basic functionality of, of the viewer and the visualization tools that are located within there. We'll go back to base data layers and clear this out. Zoom back out. So I'm now going to step into the, uh, the download services component of the presentation. So you'll be able to see just, okay, this is exactly how you about get going and, uh, and, and acquiring data from the USGS data holdings. So I'm going to zoom in, to zoom in to Globe, Arizona, as an example. So basically, the so the download services, it's basically the national map is one place and one service to download all the base map uh, layers that are either in vector, raster, format, and including the U.S. topo data products, which includes our updated topographic maps as well as the entire suite of historic topographic maps for any area in the country. Some of you might be familiar with the seamless data set or seamless server, which is a server that we had, uh, USGS had used for a um, number of years, that has been totally phased out. Uh, if you wanted different types of data for different areas, you actually had to go to a number of different websites. If you wanted ortho imagery, you had to go to the Seamless Viewer. If you wanted hydrography, you had to go to the NHD website. But the National Map Viewer, it now provides one place to go get all the data for whatever area you're interested in. So you can select an area of interest and multiple themes and data. It's basically just a four-step process. You'll select your area of interest, you select the data and the format you want, you add it to your cart, and you check out. So one thing that people think when they go in here and try to download stuff, they think they need to go over here on the left-hand side and start turning these layers off and on, and it's actually a completely separate component. Those are the, the ones on the left here, those items are just for visualization only. Downloading is a completely separate function. So either using the, uh, the download icon here, a 
on the standard toolbar or this one here, you would just click on it. So it then gives you a number of options to choose from. This menu pops up. Uh, you can draw and download by bounding box or current map extent or, or by, coordinates, uh, by coordinates that you would input or by basic reference areas. And those could be, you can see the uh, 24K index that popped up. You can also choose from states, congressional districts, counties, or other map tile uh, footprints, as well as uh, NHD hydrologic units. And this is something where, in, in the past, and it, uh, the national map was primarily serving data through um, through dynamic downloads. So you would go in and you would request data for a certain area, and it would, the, the, the you know, your request would get submitted, and then a custom-made data set would be sent to you or provided to you. And They've moved away from that now, and they're, they're primarily moving towards all stage data sets, so that even if you select a small area, you're probably going to end up with much larger data sets than what you're asking for. It's just this is a, a way that they've moved to provide better service. Uh, much shorter wait times, because everything is staged, so they can just point you in the direction of where the data is already located. So I'll just do a couple demonstrations here of a couple different things. So let's say I want to, I'm going to select counties. And so you can see, just choose a reference area, then click on the map. I've selected county, so let's say I was saying Globe, Arizona. So I'm just going to click in there. You can see it then highlights Gila County, that whole. And let me blank that out again so you can see it better. So you can see the crosshatch mark where it's uh, saying, OK, there's, there's the footprint for Gila County. We then go over here. If you wanted to find out more information on Gila County, you just click on that. Of course, that's the FIPS code, that five-digit code for that county. But we could just click on that download button, and you can see here this menu pops up showing you the various uh, types of data that are available for download. So just as an example, anyway, you can see the message there for the maps. It's, it's far too much data. They won't let you allow to choose. They won't allow you to choose that much data at one time. So you would have to zoom into a smaller area for that. Uh, so just as an example, we'll start with, um, let's say we wanted the hydrography for Gila County, and click on Next. And then this menu shows up, showing you all the different types of data that are available for Gila County. You've got the stage subregions of the various um, uh, four-digit UCS. And then there's also some of these dynamic ex extracts that are available, various types of formats. And then over here, uh, so and then the formats available for these: so geodatabase, uh, personal geodatabase, or shapefile. So just as an example, say, oh well, yeah, we'll just select two of these subregions. So we would just highlight, you know, click those, and then click next. And then this. And then the tab over here, it's moved from uh, selection to cart. So you can then see, OK, these are our items that are now in the cart. You actually click on one. It'll, it'll show you a preview of, of the area you're getting. So you can see, even though we only selected Gila County, this is the stage data. So it's, getting, it's, it's, it's providing you with a, with a larger area. And then, of course, for that, the one that's further to the south there. Okay, so we want hydrography. Let's say we also let's say we want to also add some elevation data. So then we would click on okay, add more. Select elevation and click next. And then you can see types of data that are now available in, in the various uh, so one arc second or one third arc second. So let's just say okay, we want that we want the data for Gila County at one third arc second in an IMG format. You click next. You click there and it shows the preview. Again, this was Gila County. It's then showing us, okay, it's going to provide those tiles and it's going to be at that, uh, that one third arc second uh, resolution. So if we're then satisfied with that, we would then click the, the checkout button and then we would just uh, you just enter your email address. I don't know if anybody actually wants to provide their address, or we could just 
you could just type it in there and basically you get a sample of um, or you would and depending on what data you requested and how much you probably fairly quickly receive an email with directions and links provided telling you where to go to get the data that's provided to you and uh, if you select a lot of dynamic data sets it'll take longer than if you've just selected the stage data so that's one example of that. I'll uh, I'll just do another just uh, I'll do another demonstration here for another area. We'll clear it out. Let me reset the zoom. Let's go ahead and clear the cart also. So let's see. I'm going to. Zoom into the Tucson area. And so we'll do this again download data. Let's say I just did want it to choose um, data for a, by, by the 24K index. So you click that, the 24K index pops up. Um, say that's the one I'm interested in. So you can see, okay, that's the Tucson East Quad. And then we'll click download. And let's say I wanted the, the new US topo product as well as all the historical topographic maps for that area. And then we click next. Okay, so it's saying, okay, here's the most recent US topo product for Tucson East created in 2011. So we say, okay, we'll click that box. It comes in GeoPDF format. It's great. Click next. And so it's added that to our, uh, to our cart. And for some reason that was, even though I selected US Topo and Historical Topo maps, it didn't come up with both. I, th I think they've made some changes here where, where it says, you know, please do not select more than five themes for download. It, it seems to be having a little problem and it might only work best to just do one at a time, but easy enough. So we click historical topo maps, click next. You can see there's a lot of different maps available and uh, this is basically uh, the, the entire country, our entire historical topographic maps holding are now available. So you can see at the various uh, scale, you know, uh, footprints, the one minute by, or excuse me, one degree by two degree um, maps, 15 minute by 15 minute, uh, on down to our standard uh, seven and a half minute products. And so you can see the map count also. So this is actually a tremendous amount of data. If you were to select this, you'd be getting 52 topographic maps. And as we, as I'll, I'll add it to the card and then we'll see the footprint and you'll see why there's so many actually. So do next, so it's adding that to the cart. And we'll click on that to see the preview. And so as I was mentioning, it's blank that out. So you, you're getting more since it is a staged, the staged data set downloads. You're getting more than what you were asking for. So you're actually going to be getting these these nine maps, that map and the surrounding ones. So that's why it ends up being so many maps that you'd be getting. When you get the email for this, you know, as you would say, okay, I'm ready to check out. You check out and add your email address. When you get the email, you actually, you're not forced to download everything. It's just, prov it provides you with a list of where you go to get them. So you actually do have some choices there about how, how much data you're actually going to be getting. Okay, so I guess that covers the, the download component, the presentation. Um, we'll move to the final part our presentation here. And I'll zoom back out again at the national level. So if you are a, a an ArcMap user or a user of Google Earth or just want a way a different way to visualize things, you can pull these map services directly into ArcMap. My mouse is very sensitive overly sensitive. So just as an example, I'll we'll go back to land cover, which we looked at earlier. We'll turn that on. And okay, so it's going to pull up that land cover data set from 2006. Say, okay, that's great. Yeah, that's what I want. 
say, I, you know, you don't want to download it, but you just want to use it or you want to see it in ArcMap, you can then just easily enough click on that little blue arrow again. This, this com that comes up, view in down here, and you have some options, ArcMap, ArcGIS Explorer, or Google Earth. We'll just demonstrate ArcMap at first. So I'll click on ArcMap. And it, it, it works differently with different browsers and different computers, but you can see it's, uh, it's, it's downloaded this layer sort of into the holding area, I guess. And then I just click on that, and it launches an instance of, of ArcMap. And this might take just a, a little while. Just a little. <laughs> it might take just a little while. <laughs> but uh, so it's, it's launching ArcMap, and then you can see it's just pulled that right in. So that same exact data that we're viewing in the viewer, it's now shown right in ArcMap. And so if you find that you know these are different layers that you want to use often, you know you could add them in Arc Catalog. You can see Arc Catalog over here. You could just go in here and let's see GIS servers. And you can add ArcGIS server to to view those different layers that the national map is serving. And so you can. So always have the most current data. If you do it that way, you know you don't have to deal with the download, the, the hassle of, of downloading. And then it, you know as soon as you download something, it, it's 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 out of date because it's not getting updated anymore. So unless you build that into your workflow to you know make do regular downloads, you're always you know going to be a bit out of date. You're just using the services here. You've always got the most current information. So let's. And just to show you, so you think, okay, well, how do I know what services I want? My gosh, there's plenty of services. So just to step back here also. So I at first mentioned the help and the, the quick start guide. There's also information about how to use services. I've just got it saved here as a uh, one of my bookmarks. So you can, if, if, you, if you don't write down this, this website right now, you can always find it through that through the help menu. But this is the list of the service endpoints that are being served in the viewer. So the background maps that that we were sh that we were seeing, the various base data layers that are being served up, and then also when I was mentioning the built-in mashups, these are the these are the addresses for those. Uh, Different services you can see some of the, some of them are USGS, some of them are uh, elsewhere, uh, other components. And for GIS folks, there's also some web feature services, which I've never actually worked with those myself. But so those are the service endpoints. So uh, did you get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, So yeah, so those are the service endpoints. I should have launched that in a different one. But, um, all right, so then anyway, uh, so one other component, we'll go back to that land cover again. We've seen how to launch that in ArcMap. Uh, oops, that's the wrong one. You can also launch it, uh, we'll just use Google Earth. And again, so it's, you know, pull this KMZ into a holding place there. And so it launches an instance of, of Google Earth. And a little granular looking, but there it is. So that same data is, is showing up in, in Google Earth. Um, I guess that's really about all I have. Uh, I do want to mention that I have some tutorial materials. Uh, it's like a little training document that, it, you know, this is a, a bit much to digest just in a WebEx, but if you're interested in it, um, I'll be happy to, to provide you with that document. And it's just like a little, it, it's just a document you can work through to figure out a little more about the viewer and how to get familiar with all that functionality that's in there. And it's just something you can take about a you know, half hour or an hour to work through that document. And that's um, useful, as I mentioned, at the help, through that help menu, there's the quick start guide. So uh, it's kind of similar to that. So um, 
I guess that, that's really about all I have. I can um, try to answer any, any questions that anyone might have. Thank you very much, Claire. That information was super helpful. I know we've been talking a lot in Desert LCC about land use, land cover, and vegetation, so being able to access that information through Google Earth, through ArcMap, through the National Map Viewer, download the raw data, it's really useful skill to have. Thank you. Great, thank you. What's What's the best way people should uh, get get in touch with you to get the tips and tricks document that you mentioned? Um, probably just email, um, okay. or, or if they want to route it through through uh, through you, Sally. Um, okay. My I just chatted. Yeah, there you go. Email so, address. Right. Mm -hmm. So Sally just posted that up my email address. So it's C and then the first seven letters of my last name at usgs.gov. Yeah, I just uh, in the chat window put that uh, email address. So if you're interested in more information from Claire, thank you. That's very generous of you. And I'll also post the document on our Confluence site for uh, Desert LCC. I'm going to uh, ask you to call. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. And uh, I'm opening the floor to questions from our callers for Claire Devon. Any questions? There, it is a lot of information to digest for sure. Um, you know, even if you have questions later that you think that you think of, I'm. I'm that's what I'm here for. I'm available to answer questions and help you work through this stuff and make it most most valuable for, for you to use. 